Hello, happy believers. Welcome to my art gallery and painting number 41. I will continue reading from the Catechism from Part 2, Section 2, Chapter 1, Article 1. I will start with a prayer. O Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten, guide, strengthen and console me. Tell me what I ought to do and command me to do it. I promise to submit to everything that you ask of me and to accept all that you allow to happen to me. Just show me what is your will. I hope you enjoyed the audio and if you enjoy visiting my art gallery, please like, subscribe and share. I will also leave a few personal thoughts on my painting in the description below. Section 2. The Seven Sacraments of the Church Christ instituted the sacraments of the new law. There are seven. Baptism, Confirmation, the Eucharist, Penance, the Anointing of the Sick, Holy Orders and Matrimony. The seven sacraments touch all the stages and all the important moments of Christian life. They give birth and increase healing and mission to the Christian's life of faith. There is thus a certain resemblance between the stages of natural life and the stages of the spiritual life. Following this analogy, the first chapter will expound the three sacraments of Christian initiation. The second, the sacraments of healing. And the third, the sacraments at the service of commission, of communion, and the mission of the faithful. This order will not, while not the only one possible, does allow one to see that the sacraments form an organic whole in which each particular sacrament has its own vital place. In this organic whole, the Eucharist occupies a unique place as the sacrament of sacraments. All the other sacraments are ordered to it as to their end. Chapter 1. The Sacraments of Christian Initiation The sacraments of Christian Initiation, Baptism, Confirmation and the Eucharist lay the foundations of every Christian life. The sharing in the divine nature given to men through the grace of Christ bears a certain likeness to the origin, development and nourishing of natural life. The faithful are born anew by baptism, strengthened by the sacrament of confirmation and receive in the Eucharist the food of eternal life. By means of these sacraments of Christian initiation, they thus receive an increasing measure, the treasures of the divine life, and advance toward the perfection of charity. Article 1. The Sacrament of Baptism Holy baptism is the basis of the whole Christian life, the gateway to life in the Spirit, and the door which gives access to the other sacraments. Through baptism, we are freed from sin and reborn as sons of God. We become members of Christ, are incorporated into the church and made sharers in her mission. Baptism is the sacrament of regeneration through water in the word. What is this sacrament called? This sacrament is called baptism. After the central rite by which it is carried out, to baptise means to plunge or immerse. The plunge into the water symbolises the catechumen's burial into Christ's death, from which he rises up by resurrection with him as a new creature. The sacrament is also called the washing of regeneration and renewal 
by the Holy Spirit. For it signifies and actually brings about the birth of water and the Spirit, without which no one can enter the kingdom of God. This bath is called enlightenment because those who receive this instruction are enlightened in their understanding. Having received in baptism the word, the true light that enlightens every man, the person baptised has been enlightened. He becomes a son of light. Indeed, he becomes light himself. Baptism is God's most beautiful and magnificent gift. We call it gift, grace, anointing, enlightenment, garment of immortality, bath of rebirth, seal and most precious gift. It is called gift because it is conferred on those who bring nothing of their own, grace since it is given even to the guilty. Baptism because sin is buried in the water, anointing for it is priestly and royal as are those who are anointed. Enlightenment because it radiates light. Clothing since it veils our shame. Bath because it washes and seal as it is our guard and the sign of God's Lordship. Baptism in the economy of salvation. Prefigurations of baptism in the Old Covenant. In the liturgy, the Easter Vigil, during the blessing of the baptismal water, the Church solemnly commemorates the great events in salvation history that already prefigured the mystery of baptism. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. Since the beginning of the world, water, so humble and wonderful a creature, has been the source of life and fruitfulness. Sacred scripture sees it as overshadowed by the Spirit of God. At the very dawn of creation, your Spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The Church has seen in Noah's Ark a prefiguring of salvation by baptism, for by it a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. The waters of the great flood, you make a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. If water springing up from the earth symbolises life, the water of the sea is a symbol of death and so can represent the mystery of the cross. By this symbolism, baptism signifies communion with Christ's death. But above all, the crossing of the Red Sea, literally the liberation of Israel from the slavery of Egypt, announces liberation wrought by baptism. You freed the children of Abraham from the slavery of Pharaoh, bringing them dry shod through the waters of the Red Sea to be an image of the people set free in baptism. Finally, baptism is prefigured in the crossing of the Jordan River, by which the people of God receives the gift of the land promised to Abraham's descendants, an image of eternal life. The promise of this blessed inheritance is fulfilled in the new covenant. Christ's baptism. All the old covenant prefigurations 
find their fulfilment in Christ Jesus. He begins his public life after having himself baptised by St. John the Baptist in the Jordan. After his resurrection, Christ gives this mission to his apostles. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Our Lord voluntarily submitted himself to the baptism of St. John, intended for sinners in order to fulfil all righteousness. Jesus' gesture is a manifestation of his self-emptying. The Spirit, who had hovered over the waters of the first creation, descended then on the Christ as a prelude of the new creation, and the Father revealed Jesus as his beloved Son. In this Passover, Christ opened to all men the fountain of baptism. He had already spoken of his passion, which he was about to suffer in Jerusalem, as a baptism with which he had to be baptised. The blood and water that flowed from the pierced side of the crucified Jesus are types of baptism and the Eucharist, the sacraments of new life. From then on, it is possible to be born of water and the Spirit in order to enter the kingdom of God. See where you are baptised. See where baptism comes from, if not from the cross of Christ, from his death. There is the whole mystery. He died for you. In him you are redeemed. In him you are saved. Baptism in the Church From the very day of Pentecost, the Church has celebrated and administered holy baptism. Indeed, St. Peter declares to the crowd, astounded by his preaching, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The apostles and their collaborators offer baptism to anyone who believes in Jesus. Jews, the God-fearing pagans, always baptism is seen as connected with faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. St. Paul declares to his jailer in Philippi. And the narrative continues. The jailer was baptised at once with all his family. According to the Apostle Paul, the believer enters through baptism into communion with Christ's death, is buried with him and rises with him. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that, as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. The baptised have put on Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, baptism is a bath that purifies, justifies and sanctifies. Hence, baptism is a bath of water in which the imperishable seed of the Word of God produces its life-giving effect. 
Saint Augustine says of baptism, the word, the word is brought to the material element and it becomes a sacrament. Three, how is 